If there's one thing that we all know Ninjago for, it is Ninjago's massive array of products and other merchandise that is just pumped out of this brand like a machine, making sure that truly no market is safe from our favorite yellow ninja. Seriously, I'm not kidding. There is an officially made Ninjago Kai kite, and honestly, my life will never be complete until I own it. With Ninjago seeking total domination over every single market LEGO can feasibly enter, it's no wonder that Ninjago has made an incredible effort to expand to the wonderful world of reading. If the kids can read the instruction manuals, then I'm sure they can read this. Ninjago's venture into the world of books has spawned an absolute insane amount of books, comics, magazines, and all kinds of reading material. I bet there's probably almost as many books as there are episodes of the actual show itself at this point. If you were to walk into any bookstore, you would surely be greeted with an extensive Ninjago library, ranging from visual dictionaries, character encyclopedias, storybooks, activity books, and even sticker books. A tree had to die for this. The children are truly spoiled for choice when it comes to begging their parents for an Ninjago book, but with so many books to choose from, it could be pretty challenging to make sure you're picking the right one. The easiest way to make sure you're picking up only the greatest in Ninjago literature, there's one key question you need to ask yourself. Don't ask the cashier though, as from personal experience, I can tell you that I'd be leaving that bookstore in a straitjacket. And that one question is, is it canon? The best way to make sure you're spending your parents' money in the right place is to see if the Ninjago book you have in your hands is actually canon to the Ninjago lore. If it's canon, then you buy it, and if not, then burn it. The major books that are considered to be canon to the Ninjago series include the iconic Dark Island trilogy, the very unknown Pythor's Revenge, the recent Garmadon Solo comic series, the Spinjitsu Brothers book series, and 2023's Quest for the Lost Powers. Out of all these canon books, a certain few are able to stick out, those being the four installments in the Spinjitsu Brothers spin-off series. The Spinjitsu Brothers book series launched all the way back in 2021, with the premise of taking readers far back into the past of Ninjago to showcase some of Wu and Garmadon's adventures in their younger years. Certainly a very interesting premise that eventually spawned four titles in the series. For years, fans have wanted to see what Garmadon and Wu's younger years looked like, and now we are finally getting just that. Sure, it was on some sort of animated spin-off show, but it was sure better than nothing. The first title in this brand new Ninjago spin-off is titled The Curse of the Cat-Eye Jewel, which, as you would expect from the title, features the Cat-Eye Jewel, an ancient gemstone protected by these people called the Order of Fellas, being the first documented furries in all of Ninjago. But what exactly are these people protecting this ancient gemstone from? Or should I say, who are these protecting this gemstone from? As within the book, these cat cosplayers are trying to stop the half-cat, half-human hybrid sorceress, Naniko, from getting her paws on the stone. I really hope that she didn't awaken anything in anyone. I'm pretty sure Garmadon actually had some kind of attraction to her in this book, so that was kind of disturbing to read. Aniko seeks the Cat Eye Jewel as a gemstone has the power to grant any cat that has possession of it immortality, with Naniko wanting to use her immortality to beat her old teacher the first Benjutsu master, combining her immortality with her very own former Benjutsu, Cat Jitsu. No, you did not hear me wrong, I did just say Cat Jitsu. Naniko was able to create her own former spinjitsu called Cat Jitsu, giving the user the ability to jump up or down while using spinjitsu, so it's pretty much useless. This book was certainly an interesting start to the new Ninjago spin-off series, focusing on pleasing a particular group of people and being incredibly obsessed with cats. Kind of funny how we're now getting the opposite with the Wolf Clan. The Lair of Tanabrax is the second book in this series releasing the exact same day as the first one, and continuing Wu and Garmadon's journey to fetch a herb to cure Garmadon of the Devourer's Bite. Which, well, we all know how that went now, don't we? Within this book, Wu and Garmadon end up finding a pretty strange village. Not one of those villages, but Kai did find one of those once. After meeting some of the village people, Wu and Garmadon discover that most of the village people have been taken away by wooden puppets, which introduces us to the next best Ninjago duo after Kapow and Chop, the two puppets Bunch and Moody. Bunch looking like he had just walked out of Hot Topic. The two puppets bring Wu to the namesake of the book, the Lair of Tanabrax. And within the Lair of Tanabrax is none other than the Over- No, I'm, I'm kidding, it's of course Tanabrax. I would have burnt this book if it were the Overlord. Tanabrax was once a normal puppeteer until he became a living manifestation of darkness by stealing souls and putting them into his puppets, using a very special medallion which was revealed to be a Jin medallion giving us a Skybound reference in the year 2021, making this book the best Ninjago book to ever Ninjago book. Besides all the Skybound books, of course. Tanabrax uses the Soul Sealing Medallion to turn Wu into a puppet. Garmanon, however, is able to reverse the spell and save Wu by exposing Tanabrax to the light and reciting a Jin spell, freeing everyone from their puppet bodies. Unfortunately, 
this does result in our beloved Bunch and Moody fading away as they had no bodies to return to, truly being the saddest moment in all of Ninjago history. You think who and Garmin got PTSD for puppets after this whole thing? God, the Muppets would be a nightmare for them. 2022 would bring the third book in this series, The Maze of the Sphinx. As you'd expect from the title, Wu and Garmin end up finding a pyramid that is home to a pretty nightmare sphinx that can grant wishes. Two skybound connections in a row, it's like these books are made just for me. Wu and Garmin get trapped within a maze and have to complete several riddles and challenges in order to escape, giving us this awesome illustration of Garmin seeing his future and their brothers even having to fight Ninjago's version of zombies. With the help of Shizada, their brothers are able to escape and venture forward into the fourth and final entry into the series, The Chroma's Clutches. This book sees Wu and Gamlan continue on their journey when they suddenly run into this crime against nature, a monkey slash dog hybrid that was brought to life from a painting done by this girl Perry's father. Perry's father, Mandaro, had the magical ability to create paintings that are actually alive, so pretty much being an elemental master of painting, which is very funny to think about. God, I wish you would make this painting come alive. Wu and Gamlan wind up entering Perry's paintings, very Mario 64 style. Inside the painting world, the two brothers have to save Perry's sister and father from the Chroma, a monster created from Mandoro's grief for losing his wife. Inside the painting world, Wu and Gamran travel through several different art pieces, including this masterpiece that makes Leonardo da Vinci look like a total chump. Eventually, the brothers reach the final painting with the Chroma and are able to defeat the colorless monster, saving Perry's sister and father with them all escaping the painting world. The book and Spinjitsu Brothers series, ending with Wu and Garmin continuing their journey. Pretty anticlimactic ending, right? Just randomly ending at the fourth book and not even showing Wu and Garmin reaching their destination. Well, the Spinjitsu Brothers book series wasn't meant to be just four books, which, if you would please indulge my Detective Zane fantasy, leads me to investigating the case of the missing Spinjitsu Brothers book, the fifth entry into the series that would have served as an actual proper conclusion to the short lived series. Unfortunately, we don't know a whole lot about this lost fifth book. All the information we have for the book is the title and a basic description for what the story could be, with this book going to have the title of Tea Time Terror. In the new installment of the Lego Ninjago Spinjitsu with their series, Young Wu and Garmin arrive to a small stone castle that happens to be a tea brewery. It seems to be the place where their brother's quest for a tea plant that will cure Garmin of the evil growing inside him will finally end. The tricky part is that the castle owners like experimenting with their teas, and their potions often have strange side effects. Reading this description, this book sounds like it would have been the actual last book in this series, and sounds like a really good and natural way at wrapping up the story of the Spinjitsu Brothers, having a very interesting premise with all the strange teas their brothers would have found. So kinda like Wu's teas, but actually good. So why in the world was this book and series cancelled? All four of the previous books are fantastic stories that did a great job at further expanding the Ninjago lore. Did these books just not sell well enough to warrant a continuation? Or did some guy at LEGO just really hate this book series? According to some reliable information, the reason behind the fifth book's cancellation is certainly not for the faint of heart, and I'm sure the reason I'm about to discuss will no doubt cause many to experience severe emotional distress and the uncontrollable urge to burn down the LEGO headquarters. Just imagine the worst possible reason for this series being cancelled and then ignore it because the real reason is 10 billion times worse. Lego, in their infinite wisdom that truly never fails, decided to cancel the fifth book and the entire Spinjitsu with their series because they thought it would be better to instead replace the fifth book with a book for their newest theme, Lego Dreams. Just saying the name already puts me to sleep. For Lego's own safety, I really hope that this reason isn't true as it would be the biggest case of shooting yourself in the foot I've ever seen. I genuinely have no idea as though anybody would have thought this was a good idea. Cancelling a book from your most successful original series and then giving that book to a theme that practically nobody seems to really care about and seems to be constantly on discount in hopes of getting rid of it. The Spinjitsu Brothers series being cancelled is possibly Ninjago's biggest mistake, and that's saying something as this series has had its fair share of mistakes. But hey, what do I know? I've never read this Dreams book that replaced Tea Time Terror, so for all I know this book could be the best piece of writing ever. I highly doubt that, but I suppose you never judge a book by its cover. Hopefully at least some of the elements from the missing Spinjitsu Brothers book can be brought over to the newest Ninjago comic plan to release later this year, Shatterspin which will be another series focusing on a younger Garmadon. But then again, let's not judge a book by its cover, as this could just be another goddamn dreams book.